Hello, this is Mr. Anderson for Keller Community College, and we're going to be doing the fourth video for Chapter 3, Section 3, where we're going to be solving for theta in each of these problems. And we are at some tricky problems here. We're going to be using some things that we know about our uh, trig identities to help us uh, get theta by itself. And um, one, of the, one of the strategies in problem 22 is that we see that we have sine squared theta. And we also have a cosine over here. And knowing that the trig identity that um, sine squared theta is equal to um, 1 minus cosine squared theta, we now have the entire problem in terms of cosine. Um, what, how this helps us is that we can actually, um, it helps us because now we're down to one kind of trig function, which is kind of useful for us when we uh, uh, try to solve for theta. Uh, another reason uh, where this came from is we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So if I just subtract cosine from, uh, move cosine to the other side, we get this equivalency here. Um, so this right here we're going to distribute the two and you see I've kind of like stopped working on the right hand side. Let me just focus on this side for a bit. So I get 2 minus 2 cosine squared theta. Now let me see if I can work a little bit over here. Now because of a little bit of the even odd functions here, I can um, just take this negative uh, theta right here for cosine and what I'm going to do is just um, drop it because um, knowing your odd even functions uh, or even odd functions uh, is critical because this uh, cosine of negative theta is the same thing as cosine of theta. So this negative just gets dropped because of that, um, that rule. Um, and then we distribute the 3, so this is going to be 3 minus 3 cosine of theta. And, and now we're going to move everything to uh, one side of the equal sign. And uh, I do that because I have a cosine squared theta and a cosine, so that means I'm going to have to do some factoring. So I'm going to move this over to the right. I'm also going to move this over to the right. So if I, sub if I add 2 uh, cosine squared theta to both sides, I now have 2 cosine squared theta, and these would simplify. Um, I now, if I, I'm just going to have my minus 3 cosine of theta, and I will also then move this 2 by subtracting it. So that makes a plus 1 over here. And now I have a factorable problem if I do some substitution. I'm going to do some substitution. Let me change the color of my pen here. Now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let uh, u equals cosine of theta, which means that my, uh, let me actually put my u somewhere, let u equals cosine theta. Sorry, my equal sign got in that place. So u is equal to cosine theta, therefore u squared is equal to cosine squared theta. So what this means is I'm going to have 2u squared minus 3u plus 1. Um, I need to do some factoring, and to do that factoring, I'm going to multiply 2 times 1, which makes 2. Now i got to think of a combination that makes negative 3. So 1 and 2 make a positive 3, but negative 1 and negative 2 make a negative 3. So there's my combo. I'm going to split this up here. So this looks like negative uh, 1u minus 2u plus 1, and then here's my 2u squared. Uh, then we use grouping, so I factor a u out of this to get 2u minus 1. And I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of this. So I get uh, 2u minus 1. And all of these are equal to 0, of course, since I'm trying to find out um, what my u is here. So now I have u minus 1 equals 0, uh, since that's in, in parentheses there. And I've got my 2u minus 1 equals 0. Um, because when I have grouping, I will put uh, the two matches together and whatever's left over together. And I'm just going to solve for u. So u is equal to 0. And also, I'm going to move the 1 to the other side. So 2u is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2. So there's my uh, 1 half. So u is equal to 1 half. And also, u is equal to 0. But what's important about that is now I can go back to my unit circle and take a look, since my u was equal to cosine, now I just got to look when cosine was equal to 0, and when would uh, cosine be equal to 1 half. And I would get my answers here of 0, because that's, uh, that's where my cosine is equal to 1, and my cosine is equal to 1 half at pi over 3, and also 5 pi over 3. 
So a little bit of factoring there, uh, and my technique was to get all of these into the form of uh, cosine. Let me erase this here and uh, do my next problem here. Let's do a uh, this next work here. Looks like we got cosine, and what's nice, it is equal to zero, so that does make things uh, pretty pretty handy here. Um, now, according to my even odd uh, properties, that the negative theta of sine, or actually any function other than um, cosine and secant, um, gets moved out to the front. So this becomes cosine uh, theta plus sine of theta is equal to zero. Um, but still, this is kind of like we still got to work on like how are we going to solve for this. So I'm going to subtract sine of theta from both sides. Um, I don't need to factor this problem because what I'm going to do here is you'll see that this is equal to sine of theta like so. Um, and now what uh, I can choose to do, and uh, this is obviously your choice, you can either decide to divide both sides by sine of theta, or you can divide both sides by cosine of theta, and you're going to get the same answer uh, because we're going to work with either tangent or cotangent. I'm going to divide both sides by, uh, I changed my mind, I'm going to divide both sides by sine. Uh, that way I can have cosine, uh, this, this cosine over sine become cotangent of theta is equal to negative 1, because those simplify to make 1. And then I just look at the unit circle where uh, cotangent of theta is equal to negative 1. And again, I am skipping the step where I get theta equal to the inverse cotangent and rock out the inverse cotangent, uh, you know, on, on uh, for negative 1 there. Uh, it, it's just easier to look on my unit circle at those situations, and I can see that cotangent uh, at the, the cotangent is going to be negative 1 at 3 pi over 4 and also 7 pi over 4 which is going to be in the second and fourth quadrant. Alright, in problem 24 we got tangent equals cotangent. Um, uh, a neat way to solve this, if I have tangent of theta, I'm going to set this equal to 1 over tangent of theta. Sometimes it's nice just to get my, you know, everything down to one kind of formula. I, I guess I could have done that, you know, using the other way, but this is just the way I chose it. If I cross multiply, uh, multiply these two together, I get tangent squared theta. And if I multiply one times one, I get one. Uh, and I did kind of skip a step because tangent times tangent is technically tangent theta squared. And then I can move um, in another step to this one right there. So I kind of, I think you'll see a lot of books and a lot of professors and teachers doing that where they just say, okay, tangent theta times tangent theta is really this, and then we can um, use this as an equivalent expression. Um, and then what we'll do is just, uh, you know, since we have now uh, this expression right there, um, it might have been easier just to leave it as tangent uh, theta squared, because what we can do then is set that equal to one, as it, as it was right here, and then we take the square root of both sides, and in taking the square root of both sides, please remember that you've got to go plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. And we can see that these are four spots on the unit circle, um, and that would be pi over 4, going around the unit circle from each quadrant here, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and then 7 pi over 4. All right, so Moving on to the final three problems of this uh, worksheet here. Let's go to do these here. Okay, so we are going to try to solve this, and I notice that, again, on my right-hand side, this is a situation where I have sine squared theta. So think about the first example we did, and we got 2 cosine theta plus 2. So I'm going to try to get everything in terms of cosine. So I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So I'm going to subtract cosine squared theta from both sides. So now I have 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to 2 cosine theta plus 2. All right, let's get everything over to one side. Let's um, move everything to the to the right here. So if I subtract the 1 from both sides, now that's equal to 1. Uh, the 2 cosine theta is already over there. And if I add the cosine squared theta to the right-hand side, now I get 0 because everything's gone. Cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta plus 1. And now we're going to let uh, u equals cosine theta which means that uh, u squared is going to be cosine squared theta. So 0 is equal to u squared 
plus 2u plus 1. So what we're going to do is we are going to figure out what two numbers multiply to make 1 and add to make 2. And that's easy because that's 1 and 1. So u plus 1 and u plus 1 is equal to 0, which means that we are going to have uh, two of the same thing. So technically u plus 1 is equal to 0. So therefore u is equal to negative 1. So that means cosine of theta is equal to negative 1. And we look on the unit circle to see when that happens, and it happens at pi and no other place. Okay, so let's look at our fifth of six problems to do. Um, distributing the 4 seems like the proper strategy here. And like 4, here I have cosine squared theta. Let's make it into 1 minus sine of squared theta. Going to move everything to this side this time. Uh, so I'm going to rearrange this too. I want my sine squared theta first. I want my plus 4 sine theta next. And I want to subtract 1 from both sides. So that's going to be equal to 3. And again, I'm going to let u equal sine of theta this time. So u is equal to sine theta. So now I've got u squared uh, plus. What was I trying to write there? u squared plus 4u plus 3. Try to think of two numbers that multiply to make 3 and add to make 4. Well, that's pretty simple. That is going to be um, 1 plus 3. No other options, really. So I get u plus 1 and u plus 3. So that is going to give us um, two answers here, because I got u plus 1 equals 0 and u plus 3 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, so u is equal to negative 1 u is equal to negative 3. Now what I'm going to do is plug in my sine right here. So I'm going to look now where sine of theta is equal to negative 1. And here I'm going to look where sine of theta is equal to negative 3. On the unit circle, sine of theta is equal to negative 1 at the point of 3 pi over 2. And sine is never equal to negative 3 on this. It's out of the range of the problem right there. So um, we are going to say this is my only answer for problem number 26. All right, let me give me some room here and uh, let's, whoops, let me uh, redraw that. Okay, so in this problem, let's take a look and we're going to use our, uh, again, I got cosecant squared, I got cotangent using our properties, our trig trigonometric identities, we can turn this into cotangent squared plus 1 is equal to cotangent theta plus 1. And this is again our using our trig identities. Uh, cotangent squared plus 1 is from uh, is equivalent to cosecant squared theta. So now we're going to move things over to this side. So what we have here is we're going to subtract the cotangent theta from both sides. So cotangent, whoops, cotangent theta, ooh, plus, forgot my theta, um, minus cotangent theta, and I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides here, so that's they simplify to 0. So there's my problem I have, cotangent theta uh, squared, and then my cotangent theta equals 0. I'm going to have to factor, but this factoring is a little different. I'm going to factor out cotangent of a theta, and that leaves me with cotangent uh, theta minus 1 equals 0. So I just pulled out, if this was u squared minus u, I just pulled out a u. So this is u times u minus 1. So pulling out a cotangent theta is kind of the same thing. So that is going to now look at my, uh, I'm, I've got two solutions. I got when cotangent theta is equal to 0. And I got when cotangent theta is uh, equal to 1. By, you know, saying cotangent theta minus 1 equals 0, I'll just move the 1 to the other side. Now, um, I'm going to have four situations when that's possible. I'm going to have pi over 4. Um, I'm also going to have pi over uh, 2. I'm also going to have, let's see here, it's going to be 5 pi over 4, looking at my unit circle, and then it's going to be 3 pi over 2. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. This has been the fourth of four videos for, section th for chapter 3, section 3 of trigonometry. Thank you very much.